All right. Shut up. Stop it. So Thursday night saw Trump's thank you tour. Thank God there was no gloating. And that person was saying for months that there's no way that Donald Trump can break the blue wall, right? We didn't break it. We shattered that sucker. We shattered it. And at least he let bygones be bygones. Although we did have a lot of fun fighting Hillary, didn't we? The people back there, the extremely dishonest press. How about when a major anchor who hosted a debate started crying? All right. Let's be clear. He was gloating. But was he gloating for himself or for them? Those people in that stadium put their faith in him. So Trump went there to let them bask in their victory. He rarely said, I, only we. He also made news. We are going to appoint Mad Dog Matter as our Secretary of Defense. But we're not announcing it till Monday, so don't tell anybody. Mad Dog. He's great. He is great. He is great. Now, people like Carol Castell think, oh my God, a mean general. He might hurt ISIS's feelings. What, what if Al Qaeda gets really mad? Sorry, lady, they're already beheading people. I can't see how pissing them off more matters. And so what if Mattis is scary? That's great. His nickname is Mad Dog. That's great, too. What would you prefer a general's nickname be? Corporal Kitten Boots? <laughs> Captain Fuzzballs? Sergeant Cuddle Buddy? Besides, old warriors are often the least warlike because they've seen death up close. But really, Mr. Trump isn't assembling a cabinet. He's remaking the Wild Bunch. It's, it's like it's the Expendables, but with better actors. <laughs> the question is, will Mitt be among them? Mm, Donald had Mitt for dinner. Mm, it was as awkward as puberty. <laughs> with the relaxing appeal of a rectal exam. And at their side was Reince, like the child of divorced parents, hoping that they might patch it up. The menu, frog legs and marshmallows. The chef calls that the Lena Dunham. <laughs> so is Mitt... Is Mitt really up for a job, or is Trump trolling? Did Trump say to himself, you know, when I win, I'm going to force Mitt to come to New York and stuff his face full of frog legs and marshmallows? <laughs> it's a very specific sort of revenge, but I get it. So how is Newt taking Mitt? Uh, I think there is nothing Mitt Romney can say that doesn't sound phony and, frankly, pathetic. Uh, he, he made his case. He made his case all year. He did all he could to help cause uh, Trump to lose Utah. He's like the kid whose mommy brings home a new baby brother. <laughs> but Trump's team is shaping up. But he's not draining any swamp, unless that swamp is the Fox News green room. Seriously, he's snagging all of our best guests. Soon we'll be back to interviewing Dick Morris. <laughs> anyway, as Trump builds a team, what do the Democrats do? They reelect this. I have a special spring in my step today because this uh, opportunity is a special one uh, to lead the House Democrats, bring everyone together as we go forward. Yeah, she has a spring in her step. That's what happens when you eat nothing but slinkies. So the Democratic donors are freaking out because now investing in their dismal party is like adding a basement to a porta potty. And Trump keeps winning. He saved those carrier jobs. It's a victory, perhaps temporary. You know, it's like taking your goldfish to the vet. Maybe you bought it an extra week. Automation, artificial intelligence, robots, most job losses t today come via technology. But the real lesson here. Carrier is another example of where Trump stole the left's weaponry to beat the left. See, the left invented the symbolic feel-good victory. It was always the right that had a sit and grimace. Now it's the Republicans playing Santa Claus, and the left have to sit and take it. This is good news, and uh, obviously we'd welcome that good news. I guess what I would uh, observe is that if he is uh, successful in doing that um, 804 more times, then he will meet the record of... 
manufacturing jobs that were created in the United States while President Obama was in office. How does it feel, Josh, to be the Grinch? So Trump hasn't even been sworn in, and he's getting crap done. I know it's not capitalism to pick winners and losers, but for now, this is something until we figure out what to do next, and it beats this. Why aren't I 50 points ahead, you might ask? Well, the choice for working families has never been clearer. That was close. Period. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She's so sunny, vampires are terrified of her. Kennedy, host of Kennedy, the Fox Business Network. He's so smart, Mensa takes tests to get inside him. Rob Long, executive producer. Kevin Finway, founder of Ricochet.com. Her favorite color is sadness. Mm -hmm. National <laughs> Review reporter, Fox News contributor, Kat Timp. Stop crying. And it's official. He's now a Fox News contributor. TNA wrestler, Tyrus. Yes. All right. Let's just go down the line here with you, Kennedy. Sure. What did you think of last night? Was he gloating or was he giving? Uh, I thought that, you know, he, he went to a place where people made a stand. They wanted change. They wanted something different. They wanted something anti-establishment. They don't want protocol. They don't want business as usual. And I'm actually kind of sick of hearing, you know, this is how Trump is supposed to behave because this is how everyone has behaved. That's not a good enough reason. Right. And he, he rewrote some rules on the campaign trail. You may disagree with how he delivered uh, yeah. some of his main points, but the fact that he went back when he wasn't campaigning and delivered them to people who gave him a win I think it says something, and I think it's okay to get rid of some of these stale traditions. Well, you know what? You're right. What I think what I think what Kennedy is saying is that finally it's okay to be an. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, as someone who has been one, Rob, for yeah, so long, I now I don't have to hide. It's I like can come out of the closet as an a-hole. Right. <laughs> as if the sweater didn't give you away. By the way. <laughs> Speaking of sweater, you know what I wore this for? Do we have that screen grab? I wore it for that lady there. Isn't that nice? That's nice. You yeah, that is. So, Rob, um, yes. you know, are we going to see, do you think we're going to see more of this kind of thing? Well, look, I mean, I, uh, first of all, I mean, full disclosure, I, I was not a fan. Yeah. But he's got every right to gloat if he wants to gloat. He won big. Mm. People like me were totally wrong. Mm. He was totally right. Yeah. He won. He gets to gloat. But the second thing is, it's not like he's breaking tradition. Barack Obama went on this kind of tour in 2008. Yeah. We all forget that. But now, but, and now he's doing the same thing, and he's reminding people that he can, he can draw crowds, that he's really popular. And that's a smart thing to do when you're president of the United States. The permanent campaign he's going to run is no different from the permanent campaign that Barack Obama ran or that Bill Cri uh, Clinton ran or all these people ran. It's fair. It's not new. It is not new. Cat, it's like a mirror image of Obama, right? It is, he's, he's just a different kind of Obama. Very different. Yes. But everybody, when they're better than other people, wants to gloat about it, yeah. which is mean to other people, but you're better than those people, <laughs> so you shouldn't care. That's true. Yeah, I mean, people were really mean to Donald Trump, and a lot of the negativity was very much justified. He was very mean back and mm -hmm. often the aggressor, but he won, and everybody was laughing in the face of him. It's like the little giants. Yes. You know, except he's the giant giant. <laughs> yes. It's kind yes. of the same thing. Yeah. You, when you win and you're not expected to win, yeah. you got to say, I won! And you <laughs> do it for as long as you can. He's got free time before he's the president. I Gloat all you want. Yeah. You watch every team, when they celebrate when they win, the other team, when they pan around them, they're like, well, you know, they don't have to go Teams that Teams should big. do this. They should they take to tours to all the other cities they beat. They they I beat you guys! <laughs> all right, Tyrus. Um, don't they? They get parades. Yeah, yeah in their they city. Get parades. Tyrus, okay. You can talk about this. You can talk about Mattis. You can talk about no, Carrier. I, go. I think we're missing the point. Um, Trump's fighting back. I don't think he's necessarily gloating. Have yeah. you seen the news? They're not covering right. anything he's doing. They're still crying about, oh, we have the popular vote. And yeah. since you want to bring up sports, saying you had the popular vote is like getting your ass kicked, but you had more yards. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Doesn't count. Very good. You're long. Yeah. And every, every appointment he has, there's somebody going, oh, I, I can't in good conscience. So what he's doing is instead of giving the media, mainstream media, the story, mm -hmm. he's the story. Yeah. So he'll tell his message his way, and they have to watch it. 
-hmm. And just the, the Romney dinner real quick. Since crow apparently is not allowed on the menu, <laughs> I think Donald said, what's the grossest thing you have? <laughs> well, sir, we have, we have frog legs and marshmallows. That's why Romney's back was to the camera. And yeah. he's, like, he's like, eat the food. I think he'll he that, yeah. Eat, eat the food. And he was just... <laughs> Trump had the waiter bring him chicken. And, you know, it's like, can you just shape it to look like frog's legs? Exactly. And Mitt can eat the frog's legs, and I'll have the chicken. He had the bucket under the table from I mean, KFC, but he's when, you know, peeling the skin off. Frog legs <laughs> taste like chicken. They I mean, do. It's a chicken-tasting dish. I think that know? Trump will mm -hmm. never... Ever announce Secretary of State because you're just having so much fun going out to dinner with Mitt Romney. It'll be 2020. I mean, like relationships, there are two phases. There's romance and then there's roast battle. But in politics, it's like the opposite. I've learned like it'll be you know you're a fraud. You'll be terrible for the country. And next thing you know, you are eating lamb chops at a restaurant with mood lighting. Yeah. <laughs> or Trump's like two more bites and it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, two more. Two yeah, more. I would two love more. to hear what's going on. Eat the food. All right, eat the food. You know. You know, what the weird thing is, you know what that, that meal cost? What? $1,000. Really? And Trump and Mitt Romney, they don't Didn't drink. Tell. They don't drink. They That's don't drink. Yeah. So, Ryan's Priebus mm -hmm. must have been drinking so <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Food, okay, food is made for dinners like these. It's for mending fences. I don't know how, like, both, both of them don't drink. Good for them. <laughs> but it's like I don't know how I would handle. It. By the way, I just uh, my, my point is like this is it, this is a historical first. We talk about Obama being the first black president, despite Bill Clinton. But <laughs> that's real. That's yeah, real. it is. Uh, <laughs> president I'll Trump is the that. first entertainment president, the per first pop culture entertainment president. He's in the entertainment bubble. Right. He can say anything he wants, and you can go, oh, that's Donald. That, that's what you do with an entertainer. But what about Ronald Reagan? But Ronald Reagan was a two-time governor before that. This guy walked off of a reality show and said, yo. But it's more than that. <laughs> that's a direct yeah. quote, by the way. Yo, yeah. Yeah. This the guy food. is the most famous person ever to be president of the United States. Yes. It is in his blood. He just knows how to handle it. And everyone, that's why everyone's freaking out. Every other president kind of learns to be famous late in their life, you know, when they're yeah. 60 and then suddenly they're famous. This guy's been famous... I mean, since I was in, you know, high school. You mean like the fifties? <laughs> well, not. <laughs> then you walked into that really yeah, I did. bad joke. Yeah. Thank you, I'm thank not, you, I'm Greg. Shame David said that. Chris, we do have huge problems in getting elections accurate and and quickly and getting them believed by the American so people. So you believe that millions of people voted illegally? You believe that? I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to your facts. You said dozens or handfuls. We all know out of 320 million Americans, it wasn't dozens or handfuls. No, we it don't know that. It we know that there do. have been many studies done, Congressman, and that's an exaggeration, what I just said. They came up with smaller numbers than that. I'm giving you the oh. benefit of the doubt in this analysis. Chris, the studies that have Chris, been done I'll, for months Chris, and years Chris, by Chris, respected I, outfits come nowhere I close love you. dozens. I love you, but you're, in fact, talking about dozens and saying, out of 320 million yeah. Americans, it is a lot more than dozens. How do you in know? My, in my own state, in my own state, in my own election, I had a pair of ballots where obviously a spouse voted their dead husband. The fact is, illegal voting goes on. The question really is, are we going to restore confidence? You had a third party candidate with no chance, no chance at all of being significant, demand recounts. And if she'd gotten enough money, I guess she would have done it. But we look at the position to... you put yourself in. You Chris... got Jill Stein asking for a recount. And I get your political opposition to that. No, I no, it's not political get, opposition, Chris. Chris, I love you, but you know, you have to remember, it's about bringing confidence back to the voting process. But then why would he you said, say millions of people voted illegally? I, I will tell you why, Chris. That doesn't it, bring confidence back, does it? Chris, if you'll let me answer. Please go ahead, Congressman. The fact is, that we need to get a system that the American people believe in. In California, do you believe voters really believe when they show up at the voting booth and get told to put their ID away, they're not allowed to look at it? When they realize that, that you can have same day balloting with no proof, that you can have 50 people living at a single residence, I'm not saying whether there's millions or your underestimation of a handful. The fact I'm just going is with what the study we said. need to bring a a absolute form of confidence and states have been trying to do that and this president has been fighting president obama has been fighting against the kinds of things that would build confidence back into our voting system and oh by the way we need to bring our voting system to be faster
Uh, I didn't have a recount, but it took 21 days to call an election, and they then counted afterwards. We need to modernize the system. We need to make it accurate and believed by the American people. And that's all Donald Trump is getting America thinking about. And I think that's a good thing. And again, you show me a study after this that says handfuls. I, I will. Uh, handfuls, I'll, I'll send you several. Handfuls is a number that you can count on a few hands. Handfuls is not hundreds of thousands. I'll send you several studies on this because I will return the love that you have for me by giving you the information. Because if we want Thank accuracy you, in the system, we should start with how we describe that system as well. President-elect Trump with some key cabinet-level posts for his administration. In an unofficial announcement, he's tapping retired Marine General James Mattis for Secretary of Defense. I don't want to tell you this because I want to save the suspense for next week. We are going to appoint Mad Dog Mattis as our Secretary of Defense. The general has more than 40 years of military experience. He led U.S. forces in the Persian Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan, earning him the nickname Mad Dog Mattis. The general is also the former head of the U.S. Central Command. Billionaire investor Wilbur Ross tapped for Commerce Secretary. Ross is known for buying distressed and failing companies and turning them around and making medical decisions. Republican long. Congressman Tom Senator Price of Georgia, selected for Health and Human Services Secretary. He is the chair of the House Budget Committee and a former orthopedic surgeon who is critical of Obamacare. So far, Trump has selected three women for key positions. We are so excited. Former U.S. Secretary of Labor Elaine Chao, now as U.S. Transportation Secretary. I love South Carolina. South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. School choice activist Betsy DeVos for Education Secretary. DeVos has been an advocate for charter schools and school voucher programs. The emergence of foreign militaries. Retired three-star General Mike Flynn for National Security Advisor. He has helped destroy extremist networks in Afghanistan and Iraq and is known as a skilled intelligence officer, even though he was forced out as head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, reportedly over his combative management style. You know how many uh, security requests there were? In the Kansas Representative Mike Pompeo tapped to be the next CIA director. Elected to Congress in 2010, Pompeo was a Tea Party favorite and one of the lead Republicans investigating the 2012 Benghazi attack. Then there's Steve Bannon, Trump's chief strategist. He spent seven years in the U.S. Navy, was an investment banker for Goldman Sachs and a Hollywood investor. Most recently, he made it his mission to take down the Republican Party establishment. Come here, Jeff. Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions is nominated for U.S. Attorney General. The former prosecutor has opposed immigration reform as well as bipartisan proposals to cut mandatory minimum prison sentences. Sessions has been accused of calling civil rights groups un-American and criticizing the Voting Rights Act. Thank you. And finally, the chairman of the Republican National Committee, Reince Priebus, who will be the president-elect's chief of staff. While he's a mainstream pick that many Republicans find encouraging, oh my God. some Tea Party leaders fear Priebus is too much of a Washington insider. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. Thank you.